obituary for a living lady. My friend was decently wild as a child, and as a young girl, she was interested in a brooch and pink powder and a curl. As a young woman, though, she fell in love with a man who didn't know that even if she wouldn't let him touch her breast, she was still worth his hours, stopped calling Sundays with flowers. Sunday after Sunday, she put on her clean, gay, though white, dress, worried the windows. There was so much silence, she finally decided that the next time she would say yes. But the man had found by then a woman who dressed in red. My friend spent a hundred weeks or so wishing she were dead. But crying for yourself when you give it all of your time gets tedious after a while. Therefore, she terminated her mourning, made for her mouth a sad, sweet smile, and discovered the country of God. Now she will not dance, and she thinks not the thinnest thought of any type of romance, and I can't get her to take a touch of the best cream cologne. However, even without lipstick she is lovely, and it is no wonder that the preacher, at present, is almost a synonym for her telephone, and watches the neutral, kind, bland eyes that moisten the first pew center on Sunday, I beg your pardon, Sabbath nights, and wonders, as his stomach breaks up into fire and lights, how long it will be before he can, with reasonably slight risk of rebuke, put his hand on her knee. the bean eaters. They eat beans mostly, this old yellow pear. Dinner is a casual affair. Plain chipware on a plain and creaking wood. Tin flatware. Two who are mostly good. Two who have lived their day, but keep on putting on their clothes and putting things away. And remembering remembering with twinklings and twinges as they lean over the beans in their rented back room that is full of beads and receipts and dolls and cloths, tobacco crumbs, vases and fringes. <laughs> 